and welcome to Boxing Al Garete with your host, Robert Sanchez. I'd like to welcome you to the very first episode or show, whatever you want to call this, podcast. Yeah. But the very first, um, I'm just going to be talking about boxing, mostly boxing, giving you my opinions, uh, who I think might win, what do I think is going on, just the latest and greatest on boxing news. Um, it's Friday, so the weekend's coming up. A couple weigh weigh-ins going on today. A couple heavyweights are fighting on the weekend. Uh, we got also a couple lightweights. So, you know, just a couple exciting fights. A couple exciting events going on. So, um, let's get started with just a little bit of, you know, a little bit of news. Um, so, basically, the first one is uh, Aram expects Wilder Fury rematch to bring up to 20, 2 million buys. Um, he also states, and I quote, uh, Fury is now bigger than Conor McGregor as a personality, and he talks a lot more sense than Conor, and he's more entertaining. So why wouldn't we do more than 2 million buys, which is barely half of what Mayweather and Conor did, so that's how I run my numbers, said Aram. Well, if we're going to talk a little bit about Connor and you know and Fury and who's pop more popular or what I will have to disagree with Bob um, Which I mostly most of the time do I don't agree with that old man um, I honestly one of my first opinions that I actually want to put out there is that I feel that boxing will be Much much more better if Bob Aram didn't even exist, but anyways um, going back to what I was saying, uh, the reason why I, don't, I disagree with Bob is because uh, Conor has an established name. He's already had an established career with UFC. He had made very good numbers. Um, I don't think Fury Fury has been in what maybe two pay per view events against Wilder and then against Klitschko. Um, we all know the Klitschko fight was super boring, so it didn't do that great. But the Wilder fight did a little better. But we all know it, it, it's not just because of Fury. You know, Wilder has a lot to do with it. Wilder is very popular in his own right. So, you know, when it comes to that, um, I, I disagree. Uh, do I think that Wilder Fury can make up to 2 million buys? I I, I really doubt doubt that, um, to be honest with you. They're, at the moment, they are moving up. They are very known heavyweights, but the, at this moment yet, not yet. I would say... I would personally lean more towards a million buys, maybe just one million. I wouldn't. I think two million is just really pushing it. So, um, so ending that subject, let's move on with uh, some other stuff. Um, we also had some comments here from uh, from Fury towards Joshua, saying that he was a finished fighter. So. Um, you know, Fury always does this. You know, um, I think he, I guess because he feels that he's a Jim C or something like that. He can he predicts the future. He's always predicting something. He always told everybody in the locker room. You know, he's always making these statements, and I find it a little hilarious. But hey, you know, it is what it is. But uh, he basically stated that his career's over. That he saw Joshua quit. That uh, that the, that his ring walk was you know just uneasy that that he knew that the moment he walked in Joshua was gonna lose so you know all, all, all the normal stuff that people have been saying lately um, I do agree um, with most of the part I, I, I wouldn't say his career is over because you know you could always reinvent yourself as a boxer um, He's not making the right calls at the moment. You know, he's not, you know, I would personally be switching trainers, being doing some type of switch up in my camp. He's, I haven't seen anything like that lately. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, he did look a little shaken up. He looked like he didn't want to be there. Um, I do agree with him quitting. He did quit. He didn't answer the referee. The referee was talking to him. He, he basically was acting like he, he didn't want no more. So he didn't want none of that smoke. So, um, do I feel he should have went to an immediate rematch? Absolutely not. I feel that he probably should have got a tune-up fight, get build that confidence back up, you know, especially after being knocked down four times, get that confidence back up, get that confidence on your chin again, you know. And also, maybe um, work on some things because uh, one of the main things that I said uh, before leading up to the fight was that... Uh, that Reese was going to give him problems just because of the combination punching. 
Um, if you notice, Joshua is not used to fighting people that throw combinations. He's used to the one-two people, and that's usually what he's been fighting. That's why I always felt that the Wilder and Joshua fight is a little bit more competitive because it's style. The styles do match with each other. You know, they're both single-shot fighters. The problem with that is that Wilder would want to shock and, you know, knock your head off. But Reese throwing in combinations, I feel that... Uh, would have gave would have gave uh, Joshua problems, and will also give um, would have give uh, Tyson Fury problems because uh, I haven't really seen how he reacts to a constant pressure. You know, to a boxer constantly coming at you. Um, Wilder was chasing him a lot, but he wasn't really throwing a lot of punches. He was just kind of like measuring them and jabbing and stuff like that. So, like, I would like to see how Fury, you know, does with a person like you know, like Reese that you know throws a lot of combinations to three four punches combinations so that's basically my whole opinion on that um so let um talking a little bit about the heavyweight fights that are going on this weekend we got fury versus tom schwartz i want to say his you pronounce that name um he is undefeated he was ranked number two by the wbo um yeah he, he he you know on paper he looks okay but personally um i i, I think this is going to be a walk in the park for for fury um i don't you know i did do my homework on schwartz i looked at his resume um and it's funny you know how fury wants to talk about joshua quitting but you know he doesn't mention that the opponent he's fighting basically quit also, well, that's the way I looked at it. Um, when he was fighting a fighter named Gashi, it was it wasn't his last fight. It was like the one before that, a couple fights back. He fought him and it ended in a disqualification. Um, I think it was a, it was a headbutt. But if you clearly you see the fight, um, it kind of like I don't know. It kind of gave you the feeling that uh, Swartz was just trying to get out of the fight because before the the ending of the fight, um, Gashi was actually getting in on him, and now. If we were talking about that, Gashi was like a respectable boxer. No, he's basically a journeyman. Um, you know, it's something, someone you use to build up. But he was actually putting in work on, on Swartz. So, to be honest with you, I really don't see any upset this weekend. I, I, I really do just see Fury dominating the fight. Um, uh, Aaron made some pretty horrible comments uh he actually tried to he actually tried to tell uh tell in an interview that uh that tom has more of a chance of upsetting reese than uh, uh the upsetting um i'm sorry uh, upset of fury more than reese had to upset joshua and you know it's, it's very disrespectful on his part and it's also he's just butthurt basically um he's butthurt because he didn't have the first Mexican heavyweight. He didn't know what to do with Reese when he had him. He kept put, matching him up with weak opposition. And then he didn't even negotiate a, a good term for him when he got his first championship fight against Parker. He made the poor guy go to the dude's backyard, which we all know when you go to Europe, you got to win by knockout because you're. it's hard to get a decision over there. It, it really is, especially against a home fighter hometown fighter it really is i don't i'm sorry you know uk people love y'all but it, it's real talk you, you got it's hard to win a decision over there um <clears throat> but yeah he he was stating how um how that uh tom is more competitive that he he's rated number two this and that but it's like you know we we forget that andy reese has an extended background uh, amateur background. We also forget that he trained with the Hall of Famer at Freddie Roach for almost nine years. So, you know, the kid, the kid knows how to box. The kid's good. So it's really disrespectful to 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 even consider Tom Schwartz in the same league as Reese because you know Reese has actually proven himself in a couple of occasions. You know, I felt personally he won the Parker fight. I felt he was robbed. But, you know, that's my opinion. My opinion ain't worth much. So, <laughs> But anyways, um, going back to the, to the thing. 
Um, going back to the comments with Aram, he was also saying how Reese didn't beat Joshua, like how he beat a fake Joshua, this and that, and and that that was somebody else that stepped in the ring and this and that. But then, now this is the funny part. When they ask him about the rematch, you know what he thinks about the rematch. He he says that uh, that Reese wins the rematch. So like, how are you saying that that Schwartz? I mean that uh, that uh, Reese didn't fight Joshua. That he fought somebody else. That it was somebody else. But then in the rematch, you also see Reese winning. You know, you would think you you know Joshua will come in you know harder, more concentrated, more focused on the opponent in hand. You know, a longer camp. You know, you would think if you're talking the way you're talking, you would think you would go for Joshua on the rematch. But no, he picks Reese. So obviously he believes Reese was the better boxer overall before that. Um, it's just like, like again, it's just going back to to Aaron being butthurt. You know, he he does that with all his fighters. You know, like at one point with Mayweather as well, he, he praised Mayweather, compared him to Ali. And then as soon as Mayweather left his company, he was trashed to him. You know, he, he, he would always talk bad about him. Um, now he's doing the same thing with Fury. Oh, he compared him to Muhammad Ali, to George Foreman, to this and that. I'm like, come on, bro. Like, there's nothing about Tyson Fury that would ever remind me of Muhammad Ali or in any such thing. Muhammad Ali was a great speed, great power. Like, Fury doesn't have nothing of all that. He's he's just tall and long, and and he has pretty decent defense. I'm, I'll, I'll give him props on that. But that's that's neither here nor there so anyways oh and then another example that I have uh, look at look at what Aram said about Pacquiao the other day he was talking about that uh, he's afraid of Pacquiao being brain damaged he's afraid of uh, Pacquiao doing this he's afraid of Pacquiao like getting hurt da 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 this and that that he doesn't recommend the fight da 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 that you feel that he feels that he should retire this and that but then before he signed with PVC, you were trying to sign him, though. So if you felt that he was too old, that he should retire, why were you trying to sign him before he signed with PVC? Before he signed with Al Heyman? Huh? Why, why, why? I don't get that. If he's washed up, he's done, why were you trying to sign him? But that's Bob for you. All right, well, let's move on. Let's move on to the next thing here. Um... See a couple of news here. Also, they interviewed uh, Andy Reese's coach. He feels the same way as me. He feels that uh, that Joshua should have done a tune-up fight. Uh, that he should have definitely before you know facing Reese again. Personally, I think they're just making him say this stuff because uh, Al Heyman wants to set up that uh, that Reese and Wilder fight. You know, and if we can, if they can push the Joshua fight down. And they could make that happen, and it would be, you know, that would be a huge fight as well. And that would be all in-house fight, you know. You don't have to share with, like, you know, with nobody with no zone or whatever. It would just be an in-house fight, so that would be lovely for PVC. Um, let's see here. All right, and um, then on that uh, Fury, also that Fury and uh, Schwartz uh, undercard. Uh, we also got champion um, Josh Warrington from the UK. He's gonna be fighting today. He's gonna to be fighting uh, Galahad. I think the dude's name is. Like these weird names. I'm sorry if I butcher some names. But he, um, I did a little research on him. He's also undefeated. Um, on this fight, I, 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 I got Josh winning pretty easily. I know the the weigh-in got a little heated. They both made weight. Um, it seemed like they wanted to tear each other apart at the weigh-in. Which is good for us, you know. That means it's gonna go be a good fight. Um, but personally, I think um, Josh takes it. I think um, I think it was a little too early to throw Galahad into the dogs like that. Um, he hadn't really fought anybody with with the type of experience Josh has, with the pedigree that Josh has. So I really got Josh on this one. I think they they really the management on on Galahad really didn't throw him a, didn't do him any justice on this one. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, and he, he's a good kid though. He got talent, but I just really think it's just a little bit too much too soon type of thing. So, <clears throat> so then, um, we also have, uh, lightweights, 
light heavyweights fighting on that entire card. Um, let me see here. Um, I think it was Berrera is fighting on that card. Um, uh, so he. Uh, no, it's not Berrera. Is uh, what's his name? Well, anyways, he's a lightweight. He's the one who lost to Ward, and he lost to uh, uh, that uh, Bival. The, 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 the yeah, Bival lost to those two guys lately. He's uh, and uh, he's gonna be fighting. So yeah, basically that is it when it comes to the main events for tomorrow. Um. Just to give you guys a little bit, also a little bit of news, just to divert the subject a little bit. Um, oh, actually, I found here the the actual statements that uh, Pacquiao, that Bob actually did about Pacquiao. But we'll do that some other time. Let's go back to uh, to Andre, uh, uh, Andre, and tr the Triple G situation. So he Andre was interviewed the other day and he was uh asked about the Triple G fight and he actually stated that when Triple G signed to the zone the first first fight that was actually offered to him was Andre and they said they did not he said that they did not want that smoke at all whatsoever not at all so now this is what I don't understand if you're Triple G, how are you going to expect? How are you going to expect to get the Canelo fight when you're fighting people like Rolls, Steve Rolls, who's never really fought out of Canada? You know, who was not who was what fifteenth ranked? Come on, bro. Come on, man. But nobody says shit about that. Nobody says nothing about that. It's it's. That's, that's one of the things about boxing, you know, like, there's certain boxers, in, 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 there's certain boxers that get heat for everything they do, and then there's other boxers that just get praised for everything they do. So, so when I see some of these boxers that basically everything gets handed to them, go through some stuff, I, I get happy, I'm not even gonna lie. So, but, Triple G is most likely gonna get the, tr the, the fight with Canelo in September, it's a situation of business. That's why he keeps mentioning business. Um, you also have to think about Canelo. Canelo has a three hundred million dollar, three hundred million dollar contract with the zone. He has to make that. You know, he has to he has to put those numbers up. You know, if he doesn't put those numbers, that contract can go bye bye. You know, so you have to like put up or shut up type of shit. So right now, in the scenario right now, Triple G is probably one of the biggest money fights he can make probably second or third you know because they're talking about Errol Spence that will probably make decent money um they're also talking about going up to light heavyweight that'll probably make decent money but it's neat it's you you don't know at least with Triple G you already got some numbers in you already know there's interest in the people you already, you know you know that people will buy so I'm thinking the zone is probably going to put some good pressure on Golden Boy and um and Canelo to to make that ha uh to make that fight happen Hopefully they do. Um, I would like to finally see the trilogy. Um, I got Canelo, to be honest with you. Um, I don't. I, I. I don't see. I don't see Triple G evolving anymore. I, he. He's pretty much done. There's really nothing else you could teach him. He proved that in the second fight. He didn't show no adaption. He didn't throw more punches. He didn't do anything that you would have seen in the first fight. You know. The reason why you didn't win the first fight was because of these reasons. You should have thrown more punches. You should have thrown more power punches. You should have been more aggressive. You should have been going more to the body. And in the second fight, you did not need to do that at all. You stuck to your jab. And, you know, I'm, I'm tired of people saying, oh, he'll let it. I'm sorry. You can't expect to win a fight, a 12-round fight, with just a jab. I'm sorry. It, it Especially... Especially when you have the other guy landing power shots on you. It's just not happening. And same thing with, with people in Fury and Wilder Matt saying that Fury got robbed. Dude, no, he didn't. Everybody knows, everybody that, that knows boxing, that knows a little bit about boxing, knows that when you fight a champion, you're supposed to beat the champion. He didn't beat the champion when the champion knocked you down twice. 
That's not beating the champion. You know? Did he put up a good fight? Yes, he did. What is a, a draw deserving fight? I, I would say so. I think the, a draw was a fair decision. Personally, I thought Wilder won because I think Wilder did enough in the earlier rounds, in the first two rounds, to get, uh, I think, when, you know, if he gets two knockdowns, he basically just needs a couple more points. So, personally, you know, I'm not, I didn't do, I'm not doing the math right now, but personally, I thought Wilder won the fight by, like, one point, uh, one point or two. But, uh, but it's neither here nor here. I was okay with the draw. I was okay with that. That that was okay by me. Uh, what I'm not okay with is people saying that um, Fury got robbed because that was not the case whatsoever. So, um, so going back to the Triple G situation, basically, man, you gotta get in there. You gotta put up or shut up. If you do not get the Canelo fight this September, then you gotta fight. You gotta fight one of the main guys. You gotta fight or Andre or one of uh, the Charlo brothers. Or, you know, Heard. Heard just lost. He might come up to middleweight to fight him. You know, you just got to fight somebody, you know, a better opposition. You can't be fighting more Steve Rolls. But uh, I think I'm going to call it a wrap for now. Um, I got to go back to work. <laughs> I'm doing this on my break. Just a little thing that I wanted to do. Um, and just a little information that I had from the during the day that I've been gathering. Just wanted to get that out there. I'll probably be making another video later on tonight. Um, talking more about the Fury fight. And talking about the heavyweight division. And how how all this with Reese and um, Joshua um, has actually made the heavyweight division better. Not worse how a lot of people are thinking. Alright, well this is your boy Robert. And Boxing Out Yarete. Ya tu sabe. Thank you. Please tune in. Please hit the like button if you like the information I gave you. And if you didn't, sorry. I'll probably get some more later. <laughs>